I'm Morgan and today I'm going to be making a video that I anticipate is going to be very hard to make, very painful to make, but that I think is important to make. I want to educate people on Buck v. Bell. Um, if, if, you, if you don't know, like, um, Buck v. Bell was the Supreme Court case in the 1920s that legalized forced sterilization of the disabled. Um, it legalized eugenics in the United States. And this is something that I think many people are blissfully unaware of. And I think many people don't know that this atrocity, this atrocity occurred, that there were, like there was genocide against the disabled in the United States of America throughout the 20th century. And I want people to be aware of the fact that this happened, that this happened in the United States. And so that is why I am choosing to, to educate people on this because I think so often, I think so often people aren't educated on some of the screwed up things that have happened in the United States that sometimes we may be inclined to, to see a more whitewashed or rose tinted version of history. And I want people to be aware of the actual, like the actual facts of, of the matter. So I'm going to read you this, this case it's October term, 1926, statement of the case, 274 U.S. We do not consider the constitutionality of the forfeiture under paragraph 23. The court below in enumerating the questions raised and presented made no mention of the constitutional question. The assignment of errors below did not refer specifically to it as required by the rules of that court. And so far as the record discloses, it was not presented there. See United States versus Gaffney, 10 F 2D 694 696. This court sits as a court review. It is only in exceptional cases coming here from the federal courts that questions not pressed or passed upon below are reviewed. See Montana R.Y. Co. v. Warren, 137 U.S. 348 351, Old Jordan Mining Co. v. Society Anonymous Anonym Demines, 164, U.S. 261, 264, 265. Um, Magrudur v. Drury, 235, U.S. 106, 113. Gila Valley, Rye v. Hall, 232, U.S. 94, 98. Grant Bros v. United States, 232, U.S. 647, 660. Anna Maria Sugar Co. v. Quinones, 254, U.S. 245, 251. C.F. West v. Rutledge, Timber Co., 244 U.S., 90, 99, 100. United States versus Tennessee and Cosa RR, 176 U.S., 242, 256, decree affirmed. <sighs> Buck v. Bell, Superintendent, error to the Supreme Court of Appeals of the State of Virginia. Number 292, argued April 22nd, 1927, decided May 2nd, 1927. The Virginia statute providing for the sexual sterilization of inmates of institutions supported by the state who shall be found to be afflicted with the her an hereditary form of insanity or imbecility is within the power of the states under the 14th Amendment, page 207. This is, this is, it's, it's horrifying. It is, it is absolutely horrifying. Failure to extend the provision to persons outside the institutions named does not render it obnoxious to the Equal Protections Clause. Page 208, but uh, you'll know that something that I think is important to point out is that they're not treating, like they're not treating disabled people equally to the rest of society. 143 VA 310 affirmed, error to a judgment of the Supreme Court of Appeals of the state of Virginia, which affirmed a judgment order, ordering the superintendent of the state colony of epileptics. And I, I think it's I think it's awful the way that epileptics have been treated throughout history as well. Um, state colony of epileptics and feeble-minded to perform the operation of of a salpingectomy on Carrie Buck, the plaintiff in error. And the story of Carrie Buck is it's it's truly it's awful. It's awful what what happened to her. Mr. I. P. Whitehead for plaintiff in error. The plaintiff in error contends that the operation of salpin salpingectomy and I apologize apologize if I don't say that correctly, as provided for in the Act of Assembly is illegal in that it violates her constitutional right of bodily integrity and is therefore repugnant to the due process of law clause of the 14th Amendment. In Munn v. Illinois, 94 U.S. 143, this court, in defining the meaning of deprivation of life, said, the inhibition against its deprivation extends to all those limbs and faculties by which life is enjoyed. The deprivation not only of life, but whatever God has given to everyone with life is protected by the provision in question. The operation of 
The salpingectomy clearly comes within the definition. It is a surgical operation consisting of the opening of the abdominal cavity and the cutting of the fallopian tubes with the result that sterility is produced. It is true the active assembly does provide for a hearing before the sterilization operation can be performed and that that hearing may be in a court of law in case of appeal, but this fact standing alone does not meet the constitutional requirement of due process of law. In determining whether the constitutional requirement has been observed, we must look to the substance rather than the form of the law. Chicago R. Co. v. Chicago, 166 U.S. 226, Simmons v. Kraft, 182 U.S. 427. For form of the procedure cannot convert the process used into due process of law if the result is to illegally deprive a citizen of some constitutional right. Chicago R. Co. v. Chicago Supra. Neither can the state make a proceeding due process of law by declaring it to be such. If this was were not so, there could be no restraint on the power of the legislature. Murray A. V. Hoboken, L. and I. Co. 18, how uh, to 72, Hurtado v. California, 110, U.S. 516, the test of due process of law is the is that the proceedings shall be legal, preserving the liberty of the citizen, the inherent right of mankind to go through life without mutilation of organs of generation needs no constitutional declaration. The screwed up thing is that it probably ought to be enshrined in the constitution with how often it's been violated. <sighs> The act denies to the plaintiff and other inmates of the state colony for epileptic, epileptics and feeble-minded the equal protection of the laws guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. The mere fact of classification is not sufficient to relieve a statute of the reach of the Equality Clause. Gulf Color, Color R. R. Co. v. Ellis, 165 U.S. 150. And the classification must be based upon some reasonable grounds in light of the purpose sought to be attained by the legislature and must not be an arbitrary selection. The object of the act is to prevent the reproduction of mentally defective people. And note how they're, they're, they're using the term defective because they see people as me, people like me as less than human. They see people who are different as less than human. And it's, it's horrible. It's really, really horrible that people used to think this way. The legislature cannot take what might be termed a natural class of persons, split this class in two, and then arbitrarily designate the dis severed factions of the original unit as two classes, and thereupon enact different rules for the government of each. State v. Julo, 129, MO, 163. State v. Walsh, 136, MO, 400. Alexander v. Elizabeth, 56, NJL, 71. Haynes v. Lapierre, 201, Mish, 138. Smith v. Command, 231, Mish, 409 Smith v. Board of Examiners, 85 NJL 46. If this act be a valid enactment, then the limits of the power of the state, which in the end is nothing more than the faction in control of the government, to rid itself of those citizens deemed undesirable, according to its standards, by means of surgical sterilization, have not been set. And it's horrible, like the idea that a government could go around, like, ready, how do I put it? Like, it says, it even uses the words to rid itself of those citizens deemed undesirable. That's horrifying. That is absolutely horrifying. Because you know if they start with this. The Nazis did not stop. The Nazis did not stop um, with, with, how do I put this? They're like the logical step beyond this is what the Nazis did. Like that is it's horrifying because I'm just saying like if they are willing to if if a government is willing to rid itself of people it doesn't like by forcibly sterilizing them, how many steps off is that from genocide? From like sorry, I I would consider forced sterilization of a group on a large scale to be genocide, but how like consider how close that is to like, how many steps away would it be to just murder people like me? It's it's horrifying. It's absolutely horrifying. It's like, so I, I personally find the concept that a government could rid itself of citizens deemed undesirable to be horrible. It's horrible. It's truly horrible. We will have established in the state, state the science of medicine and a corresponding system of judica judicature. A reign of doctors will be inaugurated, and in the name of science, new classes will be added. Even races may be brought within the scope of such regulation, and the worst form of tyranny practiced. Again, that's, it's good that he's pointing out that, hey, this 
this is tyranny and how do we know that this won't also be used to persecute like racial minorities which as a matter of fact it it was it was uh, like people should research into what was happening to the native americans as late as the 1970s it's it's horrible it's truly horrible <sighs> In the place of the constitutional government of the fathers, we shall have set up Plato's Republic. M. Aubrey E. Strode for a defendant in error. The act does not impose cruel... <laughs> yeah, right, it does. But the act does not impose cruel and unusual punishment. A constitutional provision prohibiting the infliction of cruel and unusual punishment is directed against punishment of a barbarous character involving torture, such as drawing and quartering the culprit, writing of the stake, cutting off the nose, ears, or limbs, and the like, and such punishments as were regarded as cruel and unusual at the time the Constitution was adopted. Hart v. Commonwealth, 131 VA 741. Inre Kumler, 136 U.S. 436. Collins v. Johnson, 237 U.S. 5. Weems versus United States, 217, U.S. 349. In State for v. Felon, 70 Wash, 65, which was a criminal case, it was expressly held that an asexualization operation, vasectomy in that case, was not a cruel punishment. How the heck? Like, I just want to know who the heck, like, what were these people thinking? To me, that seems like that's awful. How the, that's a terrible, that's a terrible thing. How is that, that shouldn't be legal. But yet, <sighs> see like i think it's important to look and say like what the heck were people thinking like how in the world did like like i clearly think that that's cruel and unusual punishment yet the like the court of the united states seemed to think that it wasn't it's screwed up it's so screwed up this court held in the Weems case, Supra, that the provision of the federal constitution amendment 8 does not apply to state legislatures <sighs> The Act affords due process of law. Commission v. Hampton, CO 109 VA 565. Mallory v. VA Colony for feeble-minded. And I hate that they use the word, like, feeble-minded. Like, that just... I, 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 I hate when neurodiversity is painted as a defect. Like, it's just... It's, it's, it's really... I don't like when that when it's portrayed that way. 123 VA 205, Anthony versus Commonwealth, 142 VA 577. The act is a valid exercise of the police power. The courts generally aren't disposed to suffer the police power to be impaired or defeated by constitutional limitations. I'm just saying I like the Bill of Rights. I think that we should have a Bill of Rights and that the Bill of Rights should be enforced. Barbie versus Connolly, 113 U.S. 27. Shenandoah Lime Co. v. Governor, 115 VA 875. Section 159 of the Constitution of Virginia provides that the exercise of the police power of the state shall never be abridged. That's, I don't like the idea of, like, I don't like the idea of, of, of that. Like, I think that there are times when police power ought to be abridged. An exercise of the police power and a lot analogous to that of the state statue here in question may be found in the compulsory vac vaccination stat statutes. Sorry, my pronunciation is <laughs> getting a little bit poor there. But the thing is like that this is why it's like this is why we really really need to pay attention to like the degradation of rights like the what's the old saying the frog boiling in a pot of water like they are using something that some people are fine with and using that as like justification to do something just the next step worse like once you give up your right to bodily autonomy in any case it is used like every single time that it's abridged it's used to justify even worse um even worse cases of violations of bodily autonomy like this is why bodily autonomy is so important <sighs> For there, as here, a surgical operation is required for the protection of the individual and of society. Look, look at the way that they are portraying disabled individuals. They're basically saying that disabled people are, like, they're portraying disabled people to be dangerous to society. And it's like, I'm not dangerous to society. I am disabled. I am on the autism spectrum. I am not dangerous to society. And yet, this judge from, <laughs> from the 1920s would, would say otherwise. It's, it's horrible. And that requirement has been upheld when imposed upon school children only. I think I think it's a I think it's really screwed up that it's, that like I don't think that anyone should have their right to bodily autonomy infringed upon in any case because again we see where that leads. So I would even argue that that like 
the state should not be in medical procedures at all ever period because i see like i see the cases of how it's led it led to forced sterilization of people when the government has control people's medical decisions. And I'm also seeing like in the modern era, like Dobbs, how that decision has led to women having to flee states like Texas to go get basic medical procedures. I don't want the government telling people what we can and can't do with our bodies. <sighs> Those attending public institutions of learning, though not imposed upon the public as a whole. Jacobson v. Massachusetts, one, my apologies, Jacobson v. Massachusetts, 197 U.S. 11, v. Mester v. White, 179 New York, 235. The state may and does confine... The <sighs> this is horrifying. Again, like, I think that the involuntary... Like, the involuntary... Um, institution of people who are neurodiverse and different is horrible. Like, you're violating our equal protections. Um, the state may and does confine the feeble-minded, thus depriving them of their liberty. And it's horrifying that this has ever been allowed to happen. And that in some, like, I, uh, I don't think it's as widespread today in the 21st century as it was even, like, in the very late 20th century. But I, 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 I am aware that there are still cases where people are confined without trial um, to this day. When so combined, they are they are by segregation prohibited from procreation, and that's horrifying. It's like they're talking about segregating people based upon disability. That's horrifying. That this it's also it's horrifying to realize this happened in the United States. This is horrible. This is truly horrible, and people need to be aware of these atrocities that occurred on our own soil. A further deprivation of liberty that goes unquestioned. I question it. It's horrifying. The, the appellant is under the Virginia statutes already by law prohibited from procreation. And that's horrible. Like, who like who the heck ever, like, I just can't help but think, like, who, who allowed these people to be judges? What was the culture like that allowed people like this to be judges? The appellant is under the Virginia statutes already by law prohibited from procreation. The precise question, therefore, is whether the state, in its judgment of what is best for appellant and for society, and it's horrifying that they, it's, it's a genocide. That's, that's all I'm saying, it's genocide. May through the medium of the operation provided for by the sterilization statute, restore her to the liberty, freedom, and happiness, which thereafter she might safely be allowed to find outside of institutional walls. No legal reason appears why a person of full age and sound mind, and even though free from any disease, making such operative advisable making such operation advisable or necessary, may not by consent have the operation performed for the sole purpose of becoming sterile, thus voluntarily giving up the capacity to procreate. The difference is someone should be able to do it voluntarily, not like in when it's done involuntarily, that's horrifying. And when it's done on a wide scale, that is genocide. And the operation, therefore, is not legally malum in se. It can only be illegal when performed against the will or contrary to the interest of the patient. Yes, I think it, it the important thing should be informed consent. Informed consent. If someone like, if someone consents to a procedure, then yes, they should be able to have it. But if they say no, then the, if they, the right to bodily autonomy is important. Otherwise we, have geno otherwise, we have situations where we see that the erosion of bodily autonomy led to genocide. Who then is to consent or decide for this appellant whether it is best for her to have this operation? Well, maybe don't perform it then if she doesn't say yes. She cannot determine the matter for herself, both because being not a full age, her judgment is not to be accepted, nor would it acquit the surgeon, and because she is further incapacitated by congenital mental... I hate that they use the word defect. Again, this is horrifying that they're saying that neurotypical is, like, somehow the default, like, that it's... <sighs> How do I put this? Like, I just, I think it's appalling. I think the, the, the attitudes of, this, of the 20s were truly appalling and barbaric. And I, I think it's horrifying that we still, like, I still see traces of these attitudes to this day in the 21st century. The statute is part of a general plan applicable to all feeble-minded. And I hate, again, they keep using this word feeble-minded because, again, it's, it's a degrading and debasing people based on disability status. It may be sustained as based upon a reasonable classification. In Virginia, marriage with a very class here involved is a few... I hate when they use the word feeble-minded, but they did. I think it is important for me to say that they said feeble-minded because it's showing these were the screwed up, fucked up attitudes of that era. 
Feeble-minded inmates of state institutions is prohibited, and its consummation visited with heavy penalties of the law. So again, this is this is atrocious. They're constantly depriving people of equal protections. Like they're. This is also why, like I've I've kind of have like how do I put this? I really like the libertarian idea, like the libertarian idea of all like marriage license should be marriage licenses should be granted to all consenting adults who apply. Um, or else the state shouldn't be involved in marriage at all because we've seen that when the state has a right, like when the state determines that it's like, oh, they have a right to say who can or can't get married. The governments had screwed up laws throughout history, like trying to like trying to prevent the disabled from from having equal rights. They've tried to separate like couples who are mixed race. They've tried to separate couples who are gay. Like it's screwed up. Like the state shouldn't, the state should not be allowed to discriminate against people and marriage licenses the way that they have throughout much of American history. In Wisconsin, a statute requiring male applicants for marriage to file a physician's certificate of freedom from a disease what the hell? Why was this ever allowed? Was it like, you shouldn't have to prove your health to the state to like get married. That is horrifying. Uh, was sustained in Peterson versus Woodyall, 157, Wisconsin, 641. See also Maynard versus Hill, 125, US, 190. The validity of a statute prohibiting the marriage of epileptic. See, it's horrifying to realize like, like I'm, like I remember, like I I knew someone with epilepsy, and and when I was in college, and they were a wonderful person, contributing a lot to society, a very creative and intelligent individual, capable of many many things, and the fact that like someone like that person, like a hundred years ago, would have been denied the the right to marriage, it's 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 awful. That is that's terrifying. That. But the validity of a statute prohibiting the marriage of epileptics was sustained in Gold v. Gold, 78 Con 242, C. Kinney v. Con 30 Grot 858, Smith v. Board 85, and JL 46, distinguished and criticized. Mr. Justice Holmes delivered the opinion of the court. This is a writ of error to review a judgment of the Supreme Court of Appeals of the State of Virginia affirming a judgment of the Circuit Court of Elmhurst County, by which the defendant in error, the superintendent of the state colony for epileptics and feeble-minded, was ordered to perform the operation of salpingectomy upon Carrie Buck, the plaintiff in error, for the purpose of making her sterile. It's horrifying because she did not. We know that Carrie Buck, like, she did not... Like, she did not give informed consent to this. This was done to her without her, like, against her will. 143 VA 310. The case comes here upon the contention that the statute authorizing the judgment is void under the 14th Amendment. It ought to be void under the 14th Amendment, that's for certain, as denying to the plaintiff an error due process of law and the equal protection of the laws. And this is just showing that the equal protection of disabled people has been systemically, like, systemically, like, just not respected throughout American history. And this needs to be talked about. This needs to be acknowledged that this happened. Carrie Buck is a, and I hate that they're using this, but again, Carrie Buck is a feeble-minded white woman who was committed to the state colony above mentioned in due form. And I, I also, I think it's racist that it, they're calling her a white woman. Like, why does her race have anything to do with this? Her race is similar to her disability. It's an immutable characteristic. Would it make, like, would they have made a different decision if she was a different race? <sighs> the, I'm just realizing that, God, it could have, like, it could have, like, how do, like, how do I put this? Yeah, there, there was a lot of racism at that time, so maybe they would have. <sighs> she is the daughter of a feeble-minded mother in the same institution, and the mother of an illegitimate, illegitimate feeble-minded child. And the thing that stands out to me there is the fact that if they're saying that she isn't able to consent to sterilization, how the hell was she able to consent to sex? To me, that suggests that she, like, if we're saying that she's not able to give informed consent, then she was a rape victim. She, she that to me suggests that she was a victim of, if nothing else, of statutory rape, this poor woman. Oh my God. She was 18 years old. So that tells me that that happened to her when she was a 
teenage. Oh, fuck. That makes it even worse. That makes it even fucking worse. She was 18 years old at the time of the trial of her case in the circuit court in the latter part of 1924. An act of Virginia approved March 20th, 1924. And I'm just, like, I'm just thinking, like, whoever was the father of that kid should have been tried for rape. Like, I'm just saying. An act of, like, I'm just saying, like, if she was a teenager at that time and she's supposedly, like, has serious mental health issues, like, I just suspect that that was not a consensual relationship. And I'm like, w was anything ever done to the person who did that? Like, was anything ever done to the person who probably did something very, very bad to her? <laughs> An act of Virginia, approved March 20th, 1924, recites that the health of the patient and the welfare of society may be promoted in certain cases by the ster- oh, that is so fucked up. By the sterilization of mental defectives. I hate that they're using that word. I hate that they're using the word defective because people who are neurodiverse are not mentally defective. We're different. Under careful safeguard, etc., that the sterilization may be affected in males by vasectomy and in females by salpingectomy. And I'm not entirely sure what the modern- equivalent of that would be like that's still being performed under a different name um without serious without serious i mean i guess they had anesthesia without serious pain or substantial danger to life the common but it's still i guess it's still horrible you're basically saying that you like even if you're saying that they don't have substantial danger to life it's like you're saying that you don't want anyone else like them to exist so that's still genocidal that the Commonwealth is supporting in various institutions many quote-unquote defective persons who have now discharged would become a menace. The Why are they calling people who are just different a menace? It's horrifying. But if incapable of procreating might be discharged. This is fucked up. I'm just saying, like, it's, like, I already knew this was fucked up, but I'm more pissed now reading it and just confronting the disgusting attitudes and opinions of these awful judges. A menace, but if incapable of procreating, might be discharged with safety and become self-supporting with benefit to themselves and to society. This is just so screwed up. You're basically saying that like, oh, like we, like how do I put this? If they're not, if someone's like not able to provide for themselves to the point where they need like, like constant support or they need to be like surrounded by nurses to help them out and stop like sterilizing them isn't going to magically make that better so this is just eugenics this is just glorified whitewashed eugenics um but if incapable of procreating might be discharged with safety and become self-supporting with benefit to themselves and to society. And I hate how they're just talking about society, not caring about the individual rights of people. And that experience has shown that heredity plays an important part in the transmission. How the hell do you transmit insanity? Like, is... I don't think of insanity as being like an actual medical diagnosis anymore. <laughs> um, that heredity plays an important part in the transmission of insanity, imbecility, etc. Like, I'm so, so, so glad that, like, I know that there are so many strides that need to be taken in that, like, the mental health community. But, like, thank God we're better than this. Like, thank God things have moved on significantly since, like, the 1920s. Like... There are still a lot of ways for improvement, but it's at least fucking better than this. Um, the statute then enacts that whenever the superintendent of certain institutions, including the above-named state colony, shall be of opinion that it is for the best interests of the patients and of society. I hate how they're like, end of society. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, you are not treating these people with as humans like humans are supposed to have rights under like the declaration of independence in the constitution but you're treating these people as if they don't um 
patients in a society that an inmate under his care should be sexually sterilized. He may have the operation performed upon any patient afflicted with hereditary forms of insanity, imbecility, etc. Like, how the hell was this even determined? Like, this couldn't have been scientific. Like, this couldn't, let me rephrase this, this couldn't have been <sighs> scientifically accurate. Like, I get that there were a lot of, like, there was a lot of bullshit that was called science 100 years ago, but like, how the hell would this be considered medically, accurate, medically accurate today? Like, I don't think it would be. Um, and on complying with the very careful provisions by which the act protects the patients from possible abuse. I'm just gonna say, like, <sighs> an unwanted, or an un want, like, unintended pregnancy is gonna be more so suggesting that they were abused, that would be evidence of abuse. So you're not getting rid of the abuse, you're just like hiding the fact that these people were abused. The superintendent first presents a peti petition to the special board of directors of his hospital or colony, stating the facts and grounds for his opinion, verified by affidavit. Notice of the petition and of the time and place of the hearing in the institution is to be served upon the inmate and also upon his guardian. And if there is no guardian, the superintendent is to apply the to the circuit court of the county to appoint one. And this is also something that I think we need to be paying attention to, like the language like how they're referring to guardians, because even today, like this just makes me think of Britney Spears and her, like the guardianship that she has had to put up with and how even today in the 21st century, her reproductive rights were stolen from her. Like this case is relevant to this day because of, like I'm sure that there are probably other less noteworthy individuals who this happened to, but Britney Spears is the one who I just, it comes to the top of my mind immediately. If the inmate is a minor, notice also is to be given to his parents, if any, with a copy of the petition. The board is to see it, to it that the inmate may attend the hearings if desired by him or his guardian. The, the inmate may attend the hearings. <laughs> it's like we're, we're not treating this person, like we're not treating these, these people. Like we're calling them inmates, but it's like they're individual humans. Why are we not calling them like individual humans. The evidence is all to be reduced to writing, and after the board has made its order for or against the operation, the superintendent or the inmate, and I hate how we're referring to the people as inmate because these are disabled humans, these are humans, or his guardian may appeal to the circuit court of the county. The circuit court may consider the record of the board and the evidence before it and such other admissible evidence as may be offered and may affirm, revise, or reverse the order of the board and enter such order as it deems just. Finally, any party may apply to the Supreme Court of Appeals, which, if it grants the appeal, is to hear the case upon the record of the trial in the circuit court, and may enter such order as it thinks the circuit court should have entered. There can be no doubt that so far as procedure is concerned, the rights of the patient are most carefully considered, and as every step in this case was taken in scrupulous compliance with the statute, and after months of observation, there is no doubt that in that respect, the plaintiff in error has had due process of law. But it's... <laughs> It's screwed up. It's really, really, really screwed. It's so screwed up. It's so screwed up that this could have been ever allowed to have happened. The attack is not upon the procedure, but upon the substantive law. And I think the substantive law, like it should have been overturned. It seems to be contended that in no circumstances could such an order be justified. I agree, no in no circumstances should such an order ever have been justified. It certainly is contended that the order cannot be justified upon the existing grounds. The judgment finds that the facts that have been recited and that Carrie Buck is the probable potential parent of socially inadequate offspring. And it's screwed up that they're basically saying like, oh, socially inadequate. Like, what the hell does that even mean? Likewise afflicted that she may be sexually sterilized without detriment to her gender health and that her welfare and that of society will be promoted by her sterilization and thereupon makes the order and it's screwed up that it's like they i don't think they're thinking one lick about her mental health like her mental health um if they are their views of mental health are terrible at this time as we've already seen and view of the general declarations of the legislature and that's and the specific findings of the court, obviously we cannot say as a matter of law that the grounds do not exist. And if they exist, they justify the result. I don't think that they justify the result. I think it's horrible. We have seen more than once that the public welfare may call upon the best citizens for their lives. And that's so screwed up. Like, 
I'm just saying there are so many things that <sighs> there are so many things that have happened in the U.S. that never should have happened. There are so many times that like the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights have just been like spit upon. And it's it's awful. It's really is awful. I, I think that the draft, for instance, should never have been allowed to happen. Um, like, I don't think that a free country should ever be allowed to force its men to go kill people overseas. Why were these things ever allowed to happen? Um, it would be strange if it could not call upon those who already sap the strength of the state for the lesser for these lesser sa- sacrifices. I think that we need to stop being like, oh yeah, this sacrifice for the state. No, we should be looking at people's rights. We should be respecting people's individual rights. Um, it would be strange if it could not call upon those who already sap the strength of the state for these lesser sacrifices, often not felt to be such by those concerned, in order to prevent our being swamped with incompetence. And it's just, it's so screwed up. It is so screwed up that people used to think this way. It is horrible. Um, it is better for all the world and this is the line that I'm, I'm going to just not comment on this for a second because I, I and comment on it after because I think people need to hear this whole atroc- atrocious, hurtful line as it was written. It is better for all the world if instead of waiting to execute degenerate offspring for crime or to let them starve for their imbecility, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing this kind. <sighs> from continuing their kind. The principle that sustains compulsory vaccination is broad enough to cover cutting the fallopian tubes. Jacobson v. Massachusetts, 197 U.S. 11, three generations of imbeciles are enough. And that is the end of that line because I, I think people need to hear that this is what, like this, this is the end of where the ends justify the means lead this is why we must stand up for bodily autonomy under all circumstances, because when we do not stand up for bodily autonomy, we slowly see it erode. We see one thing be used to justify another. This is why we must stand up for the rights of, of disabled people, why we must stand up for the rights of people who are like of diverse races and backgrounds and stuff, because we see... Uh, one after another after another, if one group is oppressed, then not that oppression is used to justify the oppression of other groups. We must, we must speak out against ableism. We must speak out against discrimination when it happens. But it is said, however, it might be, oh wait, this is the syllabus now, I think. Uh, but it is said, however, it might be if this reasoning were applied generally, it fails when it is confined to the small number who are in the institutions named and is not applied to the multitudes outside. Again, this uh, they're just shitting all over equal protections. It is the usual last resort of constitutional arguments to point out shortcomings of this sort. But the answer is that the law does all that it's needed when it does all that it can, indicates a policy, applies it to all within the lines, and seeks to bring within the lines all similarly situated so far and so fast as its means allow. Of course, so far as the operations enable, those who otherwise must be kept confined to be returned to the world. And I think that they shouldn't be, to be perfectly blunt, maybe they should just not, you know, imprison people without trial. Um, and thus open the asylum to others. The equality aimed at will be more nearly reached. And I'm just saying, like, maybe you shouldn't go around throwing people in asylums. Um, like, especially considering that Carrie Buck, I suspect, was a rape victim. Maybe you shouldn't go around throwing rape victims in asylums. Um... Judgment affirmed. Mr. Justice Butler dissents. Burnwright Coal Briquet Company v. Riggs et al. And if I understand correctly, this is the end of the Buck v. Bell case, and then it just goes on to the next one. But yeah, I wanted to go ahead and read this to let people know about this is something that happened in America. This is something that still affects America to this day, because even like ignoring the fact that some of these these things, these precedents are still happening in the case of things like Britney Spears, where it's like she, her rights are being infringed all the time because she's seen as like disabled or whatever. Um, there's also the issue of there are a lot of disabled people who are like elderly today. And there are like Native Americans, because they were also effective, who are elderly today who were victims of this decision, whose lives were changed by this decision, who were deprived of 
deprived of their ability to have a family by this decision. And I think we need to acknowledge that not only that these atrocities occurred in the past, but there are still people who are being victimized by them to this day. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because I feel like this is something that is very much so hush-hushed about in America and isn't talked about, and that we really do need to talk about the ways that disabled people have been treated in America. So yeah, thank you for listening to me read Buck v. Bell to confront this, to confront the ableism. And I hope that by, I guess, exploring these these old Supreme Court cases, and that's like, it's how do I put this? By exploring history, by exploring our, like, these old documents by exploring the things that have happened that we better understand the influences that have shaped our culture. So yeah, I hope that you are having a better day than a lot of people throughout history have.